KSAC community helping Project Men with a phone bank this week to find donations for medical equipment. And this morning they hosted their in-person drive to meet their goals. Over at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall on Fredericksburg Road, Project Men invited guests to bring their used or new medical equipment to help people in San Antonio that desperately need those items. Things like wheelchairs and even home hospital beds were dropped off today. Project Men then takes that equipment, refurbishes it, and transforms lives through the medical equipment's use. A lot of people have equipment that from an injury that they had and it's sitting in their garage and don't know what to do with it. We can get it to somebody that desperately needs it. Now, if you didn't get a chance to visit them today, you can always visit Project Mend. They are located at 5015 Wurzbach near Ingram Park Mall. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, and they will gladly take your used medical equipment. This week, kids from San Antonio's first space camp officially graduated from that program. It was held over at Project Cowork on Morocco Street. The graduating students received their Stellar Explorer certificates with a party. The curriculum for the program actually built with the help of U.S. Air and Space Force commands. For a week, those kids spent their time learning about topics such as history of space exploration and satellite component selection. The purpose for the space camp is to inspire the next generation of local talent as leaders for San Antonio's growing space industry. They're the future. Kids are the future. And the sooner we teach them, the more that they can absorb while they're young, and that could really steer them on the right path towards their uh, long-term career goals. The Stellar Explorers program commits themselves into teaching students to support our nation's quest to solve the challenges of space exploration. Some smart kids out there using their brain power today. Yeah? Exactly. Some smart cookies. That's Inside for sure. AC, even smarter. That. <laughs> exactly right, Tim. Because, yeah, you can go outside with live camp. We do have some clouds in place. Plenty of sunshine, though. But that temperature there on the bottom of your screen, 103 degrees. That actually was our official daytime high here in San Antonio. Now we're pretty quiet out there right now and most of us will stay that way this evening, but a stray shower can't completely be ruled out tomorrow. Also not for everyone, but a few storms not completely out of the question into the second half of our Sunday. And then other than that, it's just going to be hot all the way through next week. We'll get you all those details after the break. If you get up and get going early, it's not that bad. But if you wait too long, well, might as well wait until the sun goes down to do anything outside. Exactly. Yeah, walk the dogs, any outdoor plants. It's just been incredibly hot and bad news. This heat is not going anywhere. Triple digits continue as we get ready to wrap up the weekend tomorrow. And even more so as we head into next week, that heat high pressure just not letting up. I'll tell you what, though, it has moved just west enough this weekend, though, to introduce a few isolated chances for rain. Now, we're pretty quiet out there right now. A lot of that green that you see in and around the San Antonio area is just radar noise. We have seen a few stray pop up fall down showers. They've been very brief, especially near and just north of Rock Springs and up into the hill country. But at least as of right now, nothing of big note. However, However, we're not finished with the isolated rain chance. We'll keep that about 10 to 20% potential in the forecast this evening through sunset. Then whatever is left out there on the radar fizzles out due to the loss of daytime heat. As we head into your Sunday, quiet throughout the first half of the day, but I think into the afternoon hours, especially in between 2 to about 7 to 8 p.m., we could find a few more isolated, potentially widely scattered showers and storms out there. So let's go ahead and talk about the overall setup. That's all thanks to that subtle pattern change we've been talking about over the past several days. Our heat high pressure has moved farther off to the west and it's left just enough space for a stalled boundary to slip into central Texas. Now that even stretches well off to our east across portions of the deep south. That's actually where the severe weather potential is this Saturday evening. Nothing like that expected for us here in south central Texas, but you can see here on our future cast by about seven to eight o'clock just a 
a few stray showers, not completely off the table, but coverage is expected to be very low. Then as we head into the overnight hours, we are quiet by wake up time tomorrow. I think we'll see plenty of sunshine that continues throughout the first half of the day. But then notice here two, three o'clock that boundary still lingers in the atmosphere. And when you combine that with the daytime heat and all of the moisture in place, a few more showers and storms certainly possible, generally working their way off to the south throughout our Sunday afternoon. This is 6 p.m. Dinner time plans, a few more possible in and around San Antonio and especially across portions of the coastal plains. And then like today, after the sun goes down, we lose that daytime heat. Whatever is left out there does look to fizzle out. So it's not going to be for everybody, but at least it's some things. So we'll keep our fingers crossed and of course we'll continue to keep you posted. All right, let's talk about the heat. The high today, 103. Not only did that tie the existing record of 103 that was set back in 2018, but it also made today the 15th consecutive triple digit day that we've seen here in town. And we're going to tack on to that as we head into Sunday and into next week as well with triple digits continuing. So here's a look at your case that 12 hour forecast for tomorrow waking up in the upper 70s near 80 degrees here in town 91 by 11 a.m. Plenty of sunshine through the lunchtime hour. A few clouds start to work back in as we see that small rain chance work into the forecast as well, especially for those that don't tap into any rain cooled air. It's still going to be another hot one. Most of us able to climb into the triple digits around 102 here in San Antonio and you can see that that triple digit trend will continue all the way through next week as well. That's also the time frame by Tuesday and into Wednesday that we'll need to monitor for a little bit of Saharan dust to work its way back into the area by Monday. A thicker plume over the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that does look to filter into the Lone Star State again for us here in San Antonio, mainly by midweek. So still some time to monitor that, Tim. We'll see what we can find on the radar tomorrow because then after that, it's all about the heat into next week. You're just full of great news tonight. Aren't you? <laughs> Sorry, I know we wish we had better news. Thanks, Mia. All right, Larry, SAFC hosting a game at home tonight. Yeah, so after their friendly with Sunderland, that's in their rearview mirror. Now it's back to USL Championship play. San Antonio FC is home tonight to take on Miami, a team that is certainly struggling. And in World Cup action, Sophia Smith led Team USA in their opening victory. Coming up. thinking about ways we can get better. I, I think we could have scored several more goals, myself included, but you know, it is what it is. The World Cup isn't always perfect or pretty, but yeah, I think we definitely can put away a few more chances. Sophia Smith and Team USA feel they left some goals on the pitch in the World Cup opener in big board sports. San Antonio FC will return to USL Championship play tonight when they host Miami FC. This marks the second all-time matchup between the two clubs, with San Antonio winning 2-0 at Miami last season. San Antonio enters the match on a three-game winning streak and one point behind first place Sacramento Republic in the Western Conference. Miami FC is second to last in the East, so this is a team SAFC cannot overlook. We know they have a good group of guys and they just results haven't been going their way, but um, that it's an opponent that we can't underestimate. Um, and yeah, I know a couple of guys on the team that played against over the years, so I know they have a good group and we just got to be focused and ready to play. We feel really motivated, we're confident in ourselves despite not being in first uh, like we were last year. But like I said, we're hitting our stride, we're trending upwards. I think we've got a great team, we've got great players and everyone's getting better each week. We're understanding each other better each week and we're understanding the system better each week. So I'm confident that going forward this next game and I'm gonna be more confident next week because we're just gonna to continue to improve. SAFC will host Miami FC tonight at eight at Toyota Field. Led by 22-year-old Sophia Smith, the United States women's national soccer team kicked off the 2023 World Cup with a 3-0 victory against tournament first-timers Vietnam. Smith, one of 14 Americans playing in their first World Cup, showed why she is a rising star, becoming the youngest member of the national team to score multiple goals in a match in 20 years per ESPN Stats and Info. Talk about a great debut to help USA earn three points. I felt really good. It felt good to kind of get a game under our belt and I feel confident and I feel you know happy with where we are and 
personally, it was just good to, to get a feel for what a World Cup is like going into the tournament. It was a dream come true today. I got a little emotional uh, walking out for the national anthem, but uh, that's where we want to be. And, and first and foremost, I'm so happy with the win, uh, getting three points and starting off this tournament in a good way. You know, we have So Smith, uh, you know, being super, super special in, in her first World Cup game. So proud of her, not shocking at all. But um, and to cap it off with a goal, it's, uh, it's a good night. Iran had the final go with Smith getting the assist. The U.S. will next play the Netherlands Wednesday night at 8, local time in group play. Last night, Alamo Beer Company held a U.S. Women's National Soccer Team watch party, and organizers said they had about 200 fans there inside and out. The Crocketeers will also host a watch party again on Wednesday night when the U.S. takes on the Netherlands. Messi! Man, soccer great Lionel Messi scored the winning goal in his Major League Soccer debut last night, helping enter Miami beat Cruz Azul 2-1 in a League's Cup opener for both sides. Messi came off the bench to score one of his trademark free kicks and second half stop. It's time he curled the free kick into the top corner, sending the home fans into a frenzy. That's just the spark Miami was looking for when they signed the World Cup champ. Houston Astros right fielder Kyle Tucker had himself a game yesterday in the Astros 6-4 win at the Oakland A's. Tucker hit three home runs in a game for the first time in his career, and he drove in four runs to lead Houston to its third straight win. He hit a solo shot in the top of the first inning, a two-run job in the top of the fifth, and another solo touch them all in the top of the seventh for the final run of the game. Now, the first two were against left-handed pitchers, and Tuck is one of the best left-handed hitters when it comes to facing southpaws. He also extended his road hitting streak to 18 straight games. And the L.A. Dodgers beat the Texas Rangers 11-5 at Globe Life Field last night to snap the Rangers' six-game winning streak. It's the Rangers' first loss since the All-Star break. Max Muncy grounded into a fielder's choice in the top of the seventh inning, giving the Dodgers a lead for good, 6-5. Now, Rangers shortstop Corey Seager, who led off the sixth inning with his 15th homer this season, exited the game two innings later after hurting his hand on a head-first slide into second base for a double. Seager has a sprained right thumb and x-rays were negative, manager Bruce Bochy said, and he added that Seager is day to day. So the Dodgers and Rangers back at it again this afternoon. And at last check, LA was up 10 to three in the seventh inning. Now, Corey Seager earlier today was placed on the 10 day injured list and the A's will host the Astros tonight at 807 PM local time. Seattle Mariners pitcher Bryce Miller was back on the bump last night. He ended up with a no decision against the Blue Jays. The New Braunfels High School grad went five and one third of an inning, allowing three hits, one run with two walks and six strikeouts. He got off to a strong start by retiring the side in the first inning. Bryce threw 75 pitches, 50 of them for strikes. Miller is 6-3 this season with an ERA of 3.5, and, and his next start is scheduled for Wednesday at the Minnesota Twins. And check this out. A Boston Red Sox home game against the New York Mets was suspended last night after heavy rain sent water pouring through Fenway Park, leaving ankle-deep water in the concourse and other areas. The storm system caused flooding in Massachusetts, then moved into the Boston area, hitting Fenway Park in the bottom of the fourth inning and causing a rain delay with the Mets ahead 4-3. That game was suspended after two hours and resumed this afternoon, and the Mets won that game by a final of 5-2-4. Those guys in Boston were like, it's just a little rain. Come Yay. on, we can play this. Can, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, we've got a few isolated showers working their way through Edwards County near Rock Springs and stretching over into far eastern Val Verde County. It is going to be very isolated throughout the remainder of the evening, but we'll see what we can find and yet again tomorrow afternoon and evening as well. And then after that, high pressure takes back over and the triple digits will continue all the way through next week, Tim. All right, we'll keep our fingers crossed. That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Until then, have a good evening.